Hello, everybody. We're back again. It's double ASLR one more time for this week. Double Ralph's here. <laughs> yep. So is, is that is that all we're going to be talking about today? Is double ASLR? I feel like that's always uh, what, what we're doing. That's here. the show. That's what that's what where we are. Oh gosh, it which lives. stands for anti siphon address space layout oh. randomization. So it's got a meaning. Nice, 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 nice. I, I knew that by the way. I was just testing you and your knowledge. You know what I mean. I have to type out my shortcut every time because I can never remember it. And I, you know, I'm I'm the, always the one doing the host on on the show here, and yet I can't remember it. So I don't know what that says about me. I, what bad bad Graham? Yeah. But anyway, Ralph's here to talk about Ansible. Surprise! Right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, I'm going to hand it over to you. It's all yours. Take it away. You want oh, no. you want your screen? Yeah, I'll take my screen. I was going to say, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm just going. All right. So, uh, hey, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be talking about Ansible today. So, surprise, surprise. Um, I'm going to keep this incredibly getting started, right? So, this is kind of uh, really targeted to someone who has no idea. Maybe you've heard the name and you're like, cool, that's great. I don't know what, why, um, but I just heard about it, right? And um, this is actually something I teach in my class. We'll talk about that later at the end of the show or whatever. But in general... Um, Ansible is a pretty cool tool. And, uh, I guess if you haven't got any experience with it, um, we're going to kind of play around with it. I'm going to talk about it, excuse me. And then we'll kind of get our hands dirty. I'll show you guys some really simple examples. I'm going to try to, like I said, keep it very simple, um, with what you could do with Ansible. Um, and if we have enough time, we might get into some other stuff. So, uh, I guess let's get rolling. All right, so let's talk about Ansible. Just a quick overview. Um, by the way, there won't be too many slides here, so it's mostly demo. Um, so what is Ansible? So it's really an open source uh, configuration management tool, okay? And the idea of Ansible is to help you um, configure host operating systems and a lot of other stuff too. It's a pretty big project at this point, and there is really, a, really a lot that it can do. Um, there's probably something that you could use uh, inside of your either assessments or whatever it may be. Um, there's a lot of uh, use cases. Um, it allows us to create infrastructure as code. Um, you know, it allows you to kind of, um, it's not just about automating, but it's also about writing uh, playbooks in this case, that's what Ansible calls them, um, you know, which are, which, you know, you could describe as like a um, kind of a guide, right? Writing that as code. So you don't have to keep, explaining either to other people how something works uh, or having to manually perform that task, right? It's actually Python-based. Uh, not my favorite programming language, but there's so many modules and stuff. Uh, if somebody wanted to rewrite Ansible in some other language, it would probably just not be worth your time. Um, but that said, it is pretty versatile. And for what we're using it for, for what Ansible is doing, um, Python works great. Uh, it's also kind of one of its benefits because um, Python is um, built into a lot of operating systems minus windows um but uh python or excuse me um ansible can configure windows host but it's not really a great um host operating system to run ansible from the primary uh configuration is uh yaml and um so it's pretty easy to read that's kind of the the um benefit of ansible you're not going to actually really need to know how to write in python if that's not your strong suit um, it just uses Ansible and it's pretty easy to set up. Okay. Um, and we'll kind of show you some of the, um, the YAML uh, files and uh, kind of how they're structured, but yeah. Red Hat is the maintainer of this software. And um, as such, you know, I don't think it's going anywhere and it has tons and tons of uh, maintain or pull requests and features and additions. It's a very active project. Okay. Um, so this isn't just, um, you know, a couple guys, even though there's plenty of code that we all rely on. That's just a couple guys uh, that's open source. But uh, this is a very big project. Ansible uh, doesn't really have the concept of state. Uh, the reason I uh, bring that up is just to get a uh, idea of kind of how it works. And so um, the best way to think of how Ansible works is you say, I want to do step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, in that order, right? And, you know, those can be as simple as um, running a command, right, on the host. Ansible uses something called modules to kind of replace running something like apt-get um, update, right? 
And um, it goes in order, right? So first thing, second thing, third thing, you know, um, and that uh, order, right? But it doesn't know what it did in the past if you were to run the playbook again. I just want you to, like, it'll have to do it all over again. So it does a lot of checks. Um, and just a, just an idea. It's procedural. Uh, one, two, three, four. It's really good for OS configurations. And um, it's not that great for uh, cloud, right? Um, I'll probably do another webcast on Terraform where we talk about like configuring anything with an API. But operating systems don't natively have something like a REST API. So um, Ansible is really good at communicating with operating systems. Uh, like I said, it's a very active project. It's totally free, open source. There's really no licensing model around Ansible. So there's no, you know, um, sign up for this. If you want to do this, you got to pay this. So um, it, it's very open in that way. It is agentless. So there are many other um, infrastructure as code projects out there um, that use something called an agent. Um, and what would happen is, is that if you want to use this configuration management tool, you would install the agent on the device. And then on some other device, you would... Uh, you know, connect that agent and then that agent can be queried to find out information about the device. The way Ansible works is um, it uses two primary protocols to communicate with host. Um, depending on the operating system, uh, it uses either SSH uh, for Linux and it uses WinRM for Windows. And what it will do is it connects to the other device over one of those two protocols and starts issuing commands. Um, the only requirement on the host is that it has Python in the case of SSH, it probably has Python. Um, which is not an agent, right? It's just one of the requirements to execute. Um, and then uh, on Windows, WinRM needs to be enabled. So WinRM is um, uh, built into the Windows operating system, but it's not enabled by default, okay? Uh, again, uh, why using Ansible? The YAML configuration is very simple. Um, and while it can be a little complex when you start writing a lot of nested things, uh, arguably speaking, uh, overall, it's just not, a, uh, not like a traditional programming language, okay? Um, there's really large module support, which is another reason to use Ansible. Like a lot, a lot of stuff that I haven't even done or touched or even got into that it can do. And it's just another thing, you know, kind of on the list of features, right? Um, it replaces bash scripts. So that's the best way to think of it. If you've ever written a bash script before, which I was writing one recently for a current engagement, um, you're like, why didn't I write an Ansible? Well, because it just didn't fit the mold, right? Like I didn't want to have to bring Ansible into the into the case, right? Um, bash scripts are really good if you're writing something that is like three lines, like do this, do that, do this. All right, cool. All right, three commands or something. Bash scripts aren't that bad, honestly. And they provide a easy simplicity. Uh, I don't need to install anything, so on and so forth, right? But as soon as you start getting into a longer bash script, Ansible probably is what you should be doing, okay? Whether you're running that Ansible directly on the host, meaning no kind of SSH connection. It can run localhost, which you'll see. Or you're connecting to the host remotely, okay? Um, so it does replace bash scripting. And the biggest thing that it does is in a bash script, when you execute a command and the um, there's an error or something uh, gets ran twice and it causes you know a file to get edited that shouldn't be, then you have to start putting logic into your bash script. A lot of the Ansible modules already have that logic, so they're not going to change something that's already been changed, which is awesome, right? And it makes your code repeatable. All right, uh, just a couple of pitfalls about Ansible. Um, it can be slow. I talked at the very beginning. I said Ansible is procedural. We'll do step one, step two, step three. Um, and uh, those are great. But if you got a lot of steps, um, it could take a little while to check everything, okay? Additionally, because it doesn't have the concept of state, it doesn't know what it did if you run Ansible Playbook again, it'll check all of those things again because it's trying to create um, the same effect, right? The same uh, configuration. So it's going to go check to see if anything's been changed, right? Um, so while that's good, it does create a little bit of um, slower execution depending on where you're at. Um, it still requires logic, okay? So um, Ansible modules do allow you to execute something, and it should, for the most part, do some checks. But sometimes you've got to bring in your own logic. You're going to be doing this first, doing that first. Now, Ansible does support a bunch of different ways to add logic. We're not going to get into that in this really basic um, intro to Ansible, but logic is there. It's not really good for APIs. Um, Ansible does support uh, communicating with cloud provider APIs like DigitalOcean, AWS, a bunch of any, uh, other things like that, right? Um, including other APIs that aren't really as popular, right? Um, and Or you could write your own module, in fact, in Python. But because of the state 
lists not knowing um, with REST APIs, it tends to not be uh, as fun to write, especially I, I've attempted it. All right, um, last slide here. This is just a quick diagram of kind of what Ansible is doing, right? So you have your Ansible machine and it's gonna SSH into let's say node one, node two, and node three. Now, what it can do is I can execute these commands at the same time. So we get some kind of um, you know linear scaling here so that I could actually configure three hosts all at the same time. That actually does save us time, right? Especially if you add it to like a hundred hosts, right? But when you're just configuring one host, it's gonna be the same as if, if you're configuring a hundred hosts, right? But this is just a quick diagram of kind of what the execution looks like. All right. So that's all the slides. Let's kind of jump in to using Ansible. All right. And let's, sorry, I got to reshare my screen, guys. Should I pick the right one here? All right. Okay. So uh, I see we had a couple uh, statements in there. Uh, one, WinRM or SSH access can be used to configure Windows host. This is correct. Um, you can use uh, SSH to configure a Windows host as well. But um, usually the uh, prerequisite is that you have to install the or configure the SSH server on Windows. Now, depending on the version of Windows, it may already be uh, available or you'd be able to add that feature, right? Um, WinRM is kind of built in. Honestly, I've used both, right? Um, and it just really kind of comes down to personal preference and how you want to configure the operating system. So, all right. Okay, so what you're looking at is a VS code session, okay? And I have went ahead and set up a DigitalOcean VM that is running Ubuntu 2202. Um, that's it. It's nothing else, nothing else special. And what I've done is I've actually connected into um, this uh, droplet over SSH. Um, you can see the IP down there. And then I went ahead and opened up a terminal here. So um, I am the root on this device and there's nothing on here. Um, you can see on the left-hand side, I have the um, file system available to me for this operating system. And we're gonna use VS Code and this SSH session to kind of play with Ansible. The first thing we need to do, though, is we need to install Ansible. Now, there's plenty of guides out there to do it, um, and it's really not that hard. So I'm going to run a, a couple commands here. The first one I'm going to do is app get update, and then the second one is I'm going to install the um, uh, software properties common. I threw the uh, yes flag in there, so it'll go ahead and install that. The next thing I'm going to do is add the repository um, for Ansible. So I get kind of the latest Ansible as opposed to the one that's maintained through Ubuntu. So I'll type that command in there and we will add the Ansible, uh, repository. And do an apt get update. Oh no. Kinetic not in the repo. I might have to move this over. We'll see here. No, nope, we're good. All right. So, and then I did a uh, app get install for um, Ansible. So this might take a second. It'll download uh, all the Python deposit or. Um, um, dependencies uh you'll see we're downloading ansible core and then the actual ansible module might take just a second here um all right so while that's going no big deal we are going to go ahead in the left hand side here we're going to make a new folder um, let's call it ansible all right and then inside there we're going to make a new file <laughs> And we're going to call this uh, run.yml. <laughs> yes, we need to sacrifice all the chickens for these demos because I've tested none of this. So this is all live. All right, cool. Um, now that we've uh, tempted the demo gods, let's uh, continue on. So I'm just going to make one file called uh, run.yml. And I'm going to show you guys um, pretty much kind of the simplest Ansible I think I could configure. So um, first, we could see 
that Ansible uh, playbook uh, is here. And if we type that in, you can kind of see the help here for uh, Ansible playbook, which there is a lot of different ways to kind of execute this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and CD into this Ansible folder. And you can see our, our run.yaml files right here. Um, I'm going to paste a very simple playbook. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now, um, you can see uh, one thing that you can also do in VS Code is we can go ahead and enable the extensions for this so we can get kind of like syntax highlighting for this. So if you go over to extensions here, we can type in um, Ansible. And what we're going to do is we're going to install the extension on the remote device here because I actually have it on my host, but I don't have it on the remote device. And what this will do is this will enable um, syntax highlighting so we can kind of see if something's not right with our Ansible. Um, all right, cool. Now you can see instead of just white, we kind of get this. It also do Ansible lending if you have that set up. All right, cool. Um, and you can see the colors here moving. All right, so what we have here is we have a very simple playbook. Uh, we have given it a name up the top here. I'm going to set the uh, the host. So this is where you could define the host that you want to communicate with. In this case, uh, for our super simple example, we're saying localhost. So we're actually going to be running these commands uh, on our own system, okay? And we're setting connection type to local. Um, you could set that. This is where you would set something like SSH, or you could set something like WinRM. Um, additionally, you could actually define uh, the host name here, uh, use an inventory file. We can kind of get into that. But in general, we're just going to be running these commands on our own host. And the next uh, thing is like, what do we want Ansible to do? So we can give it some task, okay? So whenever you have a task, um, you typically want to give it a name. It's kind of a requirement. And so this is just saying, just execute ls-lrt, right? And then the command. You could put whatever you want in here doesn't matter, but this is what's going to show up when you run the playbook as like what it did, okay? Um, I'm using the module shell, which is the most basic of modules inside of Ansible. What this means is the module will execute whatever command you have here in the, in the terminal on the host, right? Um, it doesn't have really any logic, and it should be your last resort when it comes to executing things. Sometimes you want to run something on a Linux host and there's no existing Ansible module that kind of does the logic for you, um, that's when you might use the shell command, okay? Um, there's kind of like a lot of ways to skin the cat when it comes to building Ansible playbooks and you kind of have the autonomy to do it however you want. Um, but trying to use a module is kind of the preferred way to do it because it'll do some more checks, whereas shell is not going to do any kind of checks. In this case, super simple. Um, the next thing we're doing is we're going to use a register now, what a register is, it's just a way to save some output from, let's say, this task, okay? Um, and that register, you could also save stuff to a file. There's a bunch of stuff you could do. But in case, in this case, we're just going to save this to the output register, um, which is going to be a variable. And we are then going to use the debug module, um, which, again, is aptly used for debugging things, to just output something to our terminal when Ansible runs, right? Um, and simply put, it's going to run this command, ls-lrt in the current folder that we execute the playbook in, right? Um, it's going to output, save that to, um, the, uh, to a variable called output. And what we're going to do is when we run debug, we're going to reference that variable and output it to standard, um, the, output, the, uh, the standard output of the lines. You could also output the standard error. There's a bunch of ways to do this, right? Awesome. So very simple playbook here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. And we are going to say Ansible playbook run. And if everything works, it did. All right, so at the very top here, you can see that um, we have no inventory, right? So typically, you could have an inventory, lots of different hosts that you want to configure, and you could decide when or, or how you want to call those hosts. You can also decide when you call the playbook which host you want to use. So there's lots of options. But at the top here, you could see the first thing it did is gather host facts. So Ansible will gather all the facts about the host 
um, including operating system type, a bunch of other facts. You can actually tell Ansible to not gather facts uh, about the operating system, but you can utilize those facts later on to do different kinds of conditionals, right? Um, my task right here, just execute a command. Uh, you can see that this is orange because it actually changed something. Uh, it'll kind of always be orange in this case because the module shell doesn't have the logic to check if something is or not uh, changed. And then the debug is the actual debug. So you can see our output, our standard outlines is just the output from ls-lrt, right? And there we are. So very, very simple playbook, just one YAML file. You could see that you could add more tasks here to do more things, um, you know, whatever you want to do, right? Um, trying to keep it as simple as possible. And we're running it on our own host, right? I haven't even got into SSHing to another host. Um, but what if you want to do something a little more complex? Even more importantly, what if you want to do something more complex, but you don't really want to have to figure out what all the lines are or what all needs to be done? One example of that is installing Docker. It's something I util utilize a lot. Now, if you go look up, there's probably some guides on how to install Docker on Ubuntu. Great. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to use a Ansible role that's already been pre-built. Like, I don't have to go figure this role out, or I don't have to go figure out all the commands, or I don't even have to build the role. I'm going to use one of these roles, um, and we're going to pull it from the Ansible Galaxy, okay? Which is just like this equivalent of a big repository of a bunch of useful tasks that you might want to do on an operating system. One of those, in this case, is installing Docker. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use this role. Um, now, uh, I do want to show you this real quick. Um, the role, I'm going to uh, kind of switch screens real quick here. All right. So there, this is the Ansible role, and it is uh, written by a uh, curling guy uh, who makes a lot of other Ansible roles, but this is the Git repository for this role. Now. Um, he has included some documentation on kind of how to use the role and how to set it up um, and, you know, kind of all the nuances and options. Um, you can see at the bottom here, uh, we're going to need a, a couple things to uh, kind of make this work. Um, and he'll give you kind of an example playbook, right? So we're pretty much just going to call the role. You can also see that the actual role lives over here at Ansible Galaxy. And um, in here, you can see the one-liner to install the role. You can also see what versions of the operating system are supported. Um, and you can go from there. Now, um, I'm hoping this 2202 works, but hmm, we'll see. Um, but anyways, so this is kind of Ansible Galaxy. Now, there's you can go search for more roles for doing other things. Um, but right now, we're going to install Docker on our host that doesn't have Docker. And we're going to use Ansible to do it. And we're not going to have to look up all the commands of how it works. So to do that, I am going to switch right back over to my um, VS Code session that is running. All right. And we are going to, yeah, I'm sharing it again. All right. Um, can, uh, can you share the, uh, VS code again? There it is. Sorry. I was busy swatting bots. Swatting. Yeah. Swat bot swatting. Oh yeah. New, new girls in my area. Interesting. All right. Um, so right now we just have this, uh, run command and what we're going to do is we're just going to install a couple of things, uh, to install Docker, right? Um, we're going to install the role on the host so that we can install Docker, right? Now, you could do this on your local host and run it remotely. Um, we could get into that in another lab. But um, let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to run uh, a couple commands that to make sure our... Um, the first one is to make sure this uh, community general collection is installed. Um, Ansible... Ooh, no. It might already be installed. So hold on. I'm not sure why these collections aren't working. Demo gods, help me. <laughs> Identifier. Hmm. All right. Well, 
let's keep driving on. Let's see if this uh, roll will install. So Ansible Galaxy installed. A collection is a slightly different than a roll, but let's see if. All right, so it did grab the um, the role itself. So what it does is Ansible Galaxy. When you say the uh, the name of the role, it'll reference the um, the Git repo, the GitHub repo, and then actually download it, and then it saves it to your host. Um, you could see that the actual role got saved to the root.ansible folder, which is the default folder um, to save this role. Um, the other thing we're going to do is um, to make this role work, we're going to install uh, the Gerlin guide.pip. All right, and now. Let's go ahead and utilize this role. So I am going to change a couple things. So instead of calling some task, um, I am going to change this up. I'm going to specify a roles section, and then I'm going to specify the roles that I want to use. So uh, girling guy pip and girling guy docker. Um, up here, I can specify some variables. Now you could set up your own variables file. You could include a variables file. You could include it in when you call the playbook. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but I'm just going to keep it, like I said, as simple as possible. And I'm just going to imply some variables um, here when I run the playbook. Uh, the variable name is the first part and the variable value is the second part, right? So in this case, the variable host name equals hacker ops change me, right? Now, we're not going to be using that in this particular example, but if um, in the case of uh girling guys role for docker i do believe there's the ability to specify some other options um now i believe the default is this but i just want to show you how it would work so i'm going to specify one variable and this is the docker edition and i'm sending this to ce for community edition right um and you could change this to uh, Enterprise Edition, so EE if you wanted to. Um, but this will get referenced when this uh, role works, right? Um, the other thing I want to do is I am going to um, install a pip package, right? And the way I'm going to do that is with this variable. So now this is a nested variable. So I'm saying pip install packages. So when this role runs, right, by default, it installs pip, but it doesn't install any pip packages. Pip is a Python package manager. And I'm going to actually have it install this Docker um, package, right? So when this role runs, it will install pip. It will see that this variable has been defined and that um, Docker has been changed, or the, that variable has been defined with an, uh, a Docker, or excuse me, with a value of Docker. So it's going to install the pip, pipe, uh, pip package Docker. And then this role is actually going to install Docker, right? So two different things. One, we're going to install pip, the Python manage, the package manager. Second one, we're going to install Docker. Now, we're going to be installing this on our local host. Um, again, up here, connection host local. So let's go ahead and do it. So we will run the same command again. So Ansible playbook run.yaml. And what? Did we do Docker installation? I don't think it is a tab there. I might have to answer a lint this. Demo gods, how dare you? So um, this is kind of one of the nuances of uh, what do you call it? YAML, right? Uh, could be a tab here. It could be kind of my structure. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and comment it out just to see what we get here. It is not VARs. Is it all the VARs? More check-ins. It's all good. More variables. Uh, I want to say maybe it's right there. All right. I know it's a spacing here, guys. Sorry. I'm just like taking them all out here. Let's get something to run. Ah, all right. I'm going to come back to this. So um, it's going to install uh, pip here. 
and then it is going to install Docker. And let's see where I messed up on the other part here. Someone is saying you missed a hyphen. Did I miss a VARS? Did I miss a hyphen after VARS? Let's see here. So VARS and should just be one. And that should be under PIP. Yeah, that looks exactly how it should be. Let's see here. I'm, what am I missing? Vars. No, I mean, I don't see anything else. I mean, I could technically move this over too. It doesn't need to be right on the top there. <laughs> There we go. All right. Um, formatting with um, the YAML file. Um, one other thing it looks like, and of course, um, I picked uh, Ubuntu 22.02, and the Gerling guy Docker is not designed to actually go up to that. Um, I'm looking at his uh, uh, Ansible role documentation, and he only goes up to uh, Jammy, I believe, which is 2202, and I'm like 2201, I think. Let's see here. I kind of, uh, 2210, excuse me, which is kinetic. And that's what this error is right here. Uh, there's actually not a release package, I don't think, for um, uh, Docker and Ubuntu kinetic. So, um, all right, well, time being the limit here, uh, I know exactly what the problem is. So there's a couple ways I can fix it, but in general, I probably should have just used 2202, uh, or 2204, excuse me, which is the uh, stable version as opposed to 2210. But um, this would still work if uh, everything was, um, if we were using the right version of Ubuntu. But that's kind of all I had for today. I just wanted to show you guys kind of the, the basics here, even though, you know, we ran into this little package error. I could go fix it, um, which mainly would require me to start working through the role um, or just using the right version of Ubuntu. Um, so that's on me, guys. But uh, this uh, playbook is still pretty valid. Um, and what this will allow us to do is it will, it did install PIC. That actually wasn't a problem. Uh, it's when we started getting into Docker. So if we see here, um, PIP is now installed. It wasn't installed before. Um, and yeah, uh, that is all I had for today. Any questions, guys? Now's now, the time for questions. My, Mike's got all the, uh, he's, he's been posted in there. I wasn't reading the text. He's trying to help you out. Yeah, I know. I know for sure. Let's swap me and you. There we go. <laughs> well, while we're giving you guys like a five, not five, I was going to say five minutes. No, 30 seconds of get your questions typed in. Uh, we're going to promote your class because why not? Oh, yeah. Here's the, so, here's the link for the class. It's Hacker Ops with Ralph May. I, I and, promise uh, there's uh, there's more testing done. Um, yeah, so the... Uh, here's the class what it looks I, like. Yeah, right. The class that I teach is uh, actually geared for doing assessments, right? So I use a lot of these tools like Ansible and Terraform to try to speed up uh, conducting assessments and to kind of show you how they all work, right? Um, like I said, today, I really try to keep it really as simple as possible. Um, but in this class, we kind of go from not knowing anything, learning Ansible, learning Terraform, and then we really start diving into the security tools. So for doing um, pen tests and other things like that, right? Um, I try to give you guys the foundation of how to use these tools so that you can go apply this however you want, right? To hopefully solve some problem or challenge that you have that you don't want to keep doing over and over again. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I will hopefully come back for another one of these. We can keep, uh, keep going. I'll keep expanding on from starting to, uh, you know, where we're at. So sweet.
Well, thank you. Um, no real prerequisites for the class. Uh, I would say, um, you know, having a little bit of um, just uh, willingness to, you know, play around with these things. Um, you know, I do end up applying a bit of more advanced stuff at the end for doing red teams and stuff like that. Um, but uh, it just really depends on your goals. But no, not necessarily like strong prerequisites. I really try to start from the very beginning. So. It's <laughs> can take over tickets. I'm not exactly sure what he means by that. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Brian? You could pretty much do anything you want with Ansible. Um, it's, Can I make you coffee? Yes. Yes. I have a coffee machine that's ran by Ansible. Um, it uses go. CI CD pipelines. So that's another thing I talk about in my class. So, how to make a coffee machine? How to make a no. How to, how to a make a coffee machine? How to make Ansible. coffee with Ansible, right? There we go. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, something about repetitive tickets. Uh, yes, 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 yes. He's talking about like doing the same thing over and over again, and like Ansible can automate you out of your job, right? Like try to take over, like if you're getting a ticket to do this, this, and that over and over again, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. All right, guys. Well, hey, I really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me for the next, for the last 30 minutes. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll sacrifice some more chicken gods next time. Um, but uh, oh, when's your next class? That's a good that's a good question right there. Yeah, I think my next class is beginning of the year. Uh, I have to look at the date. I don't even know. We've, we've got uh, as we, we kind of teased this yesterday with Joff. So we'll, I'll tease it again today. There's yeah. a there's a big training thing that we're calling a summit that's going to happen uh, early next year. Um, I don't know if it's technically spring yet or not, but it's going to be next year. The big thing um, where there's going to be a whole bunch of classes at the same time, that sort of thing. Um, details we don't have completely nailed down, but it's coming. The other thing we can say is you have stuff for on demand. Is that correct? I'm yes. Seeing it here. Yes, I do. Uh, I do have an on-demand, um, so you can watch the videos and uh, the labs. I actively uh, update the labs and keep that stuff pretty live. I have a lot of like code in there, um, so I try not to keep it going stale. But yeah, um, there you get access to all the labs, all the um, the videos, um, and then obviously you can ask me questions anytime you want. So, and the the thing that's uh, that we're planning would be a all virtual thing. Yes. Yes. It would be all. There's over. a question in the chat. So, yeah. So, um, one question can Ansible build VMs for home labs or is it more for systems that are already live? That's a good question. So, um, there is another tool which I talk about in my class called Packer. And Packer is designed to actually build images either from an ISO or from, um, uh, what do you call it, an existing image or whatever it is. Um, you can just use Ansible and Packer together. And so um, I do have a lab where I show uh, you guys how to build a Windows 10 image from an ISO without manually building it. And then you can take that and apply Ansible on top to configure the rest of the operating system. And you can kind of get these like whatever builds you want. Right. Um, and this allows you to go back later and change something without having to like manually go in and do that kind of piece. Right. Um, so, yeah. Virtual for the win. <laughs> Uh, Ansible, if you're doing home lab, uh, you're doing a security assessments, you're doing any of that stuff, it is really a nice card to have um, in the uh, in the tool belt. Um, and it's very, very versatile, which is um, why I continue to use it and really don't have any plans to look for something else to replace it in the sense of, um, you know, it just, it's a Swiss Army knife. So. But yeah, thanks awesome. everybody. Yeah, let's wrap it up and kill it with fire, as we say. Tell it with fire. All right. Till next time, everybody.